Andreas, can you tell me how ERCP has performed? ERCP is performed in general in two settings, and I like to make the differentiation because it's different type of patients, different acuity. You may do it as an inpatient on a patient that came sick with an infection in the biliary tree, cholangitis, a patient that may have an impacted stone that have led to pancreatitis. These are sick patients in the hospital. And then we have the outpatients that are patients that are coming for an elective procedure. In general, the procedure is performed in the same way, but it's two different settings. So these patients are gonna to come to us always having nothing to eat or drink for a couple of hours. In general, it's four hours for clear liquids, nothing to eat or drink, solids particularly, from the night before. We bring the patients, I always like to reassure them that they're gonna be seen by an anesthesiologist for those of us that do all of these procedures with anesthesiologists, or that they're gonna be very sedated, so they don't have the fear that they're gonna be having pain during the procedure. So we reassure them in that sense that they're gonna be very nice, sedated, and relaxed. We explain them also what the procedure is gonna be about. We're gonna use this uh, long scope that has a side viewing camera. We're gonna introduce it through the mouth we actually push air so we can open up the organs and localize the area, which is called the major papilla, where we're gonna be working at. And I like to explain them that this orifice, it's the one where everything that is being made by the pancreas and the liver, everything it's draining from. Particularly when it comes to complications and we're doing something in the bile duct that they can understand because of the proximity that there's always a risk of injuring the other side. Doesn't always happen, but it's important to understand. And then with special devices that are different types of cannulas, fintrotomes, balloons, baskets, we can go in, open up, take a look and see what's going on. We take a look and see what's going on with the help of radiology and injecting contrast so we can see what's behind the small bowel where all these dogs are located. We're not making any incisions through the skin, which is always a question that patients may have. So with that, we can go in, recognize the stone, open the dogs, remove stones. If we need to put stents, we can go ahead and push the stents, and everything is done through the scope, through working channels. And some patients are more interested than others on understanding how all of this is done, but this is the general idea. I think that the videos that many of you just saw also give you a very good idea of how the ERCP is performed. So I think it's important to, to elucidate that this is done, this is an endoscopic procedure with a camera, but is used in conjunction with an x-ray machine on top of that so that there is a small dose of radiation that is given to the patient, but it's very minimal. We record the amount of radiation that is provided. It's certainly less than a CAT scan. Uh, it may be a little bit more than a chest x-ray, but it is a small amount of radiation. So the patients will get that. Uh, these are complicated procedures. This is probably the most complicated procedure that can be done in gastroenterology, and it should be done by an experienced uh, endoscopist as well. So someone who has an expertise in doing ERCP. So I think a patient could ask their physician, how many have you done, how experienced are you, those are fair questions, I think, for a patient to ask their doctor as well. I agree. I think that brings up a very good point. You know, you need specified training, you need extra training, like many of us have done, in order to learn this new difficult skill.